Hello everybody, welcome to the Daily Sip. My name is Oliver and my mission is to bring you closer to organic Japanese green tea. Today we're gonna dive into, not directly only into presenting a tea and tasting a tea, but I want to lay the focus today on the different size of teapots you can use and what actually the difference makes and why finally the smaller Kyuso teapot is just a better option for the Japanese green tea. So uh, welcome of today, beautiful sunny day today in September. So uh, I'm pretty happy to sit outside in a t-shirt. And um, today I'm gonna dive into really brewing a green tea in two different sizes of teapot. So for this, I brought two different teapots because the first one here is actually uh, tetsubin. So this is normally, and it used to be in ancient times in Japan, a bigger teapot which was used to heat water and that heating the water in this kind of pot was actually smoothening and sweetening the water, make it more mild and then give more space for the taste of the green tea. Maybe as you might be already an experienced tea drinker and Japanese green tea drinker is that green tea in general is a delicate tea. It's a fine tea with subtle notes so the water can have quite a big influence on the tea taste and on your brewing. So um, this tea originally was used in tea ceremonies, but um, we can also see um, that this tea is used for tea brewing of a tea with higher quantity or with a higher quantity of water. On the other hand, what we have um, is uh, the Kyuso teapot, so the small teapot which is normally used in uh, Japan. So here we have a 250 milliliter teapot, so um, a quite a medium sized Kyuso teapot. You can sometimes find them up to 300, 350 and they can even go down to 120 very small ones where um, you might find them for example when you brew Gyokuro for these tea, uh, teas then the smaller teapots are used because you want to have a high concentration of the tea leaf versus water ratio. So when we go and when we are looking a little bit at our um, kind of um, tea history, our tea tradition in the West, we are more used, more common to use bigger teapots. We might do black tea with it, we might do herbal teas with it, and we're just accustomed to have a bigger space for the leaves we're using. We want to brew for several cups, we want to drink it as a hydration, but here I really want to dive in what the taste difference is when I'm using a smaller teapot and why it might make sense that additionally to your bigger teapot, which you might have at home, to consider a Kyusu teapot, a smaller one. Good, so let's go directly into the brewing. Today what I brought with me is the Senkuen Superior Sencha. So I'll show it to you here. This is a Fukamushi tea, uh, tea, which is a deep steamed tea, a little bit of more brittle leaves, but um, still quite some um, longer needles, longer um, needles in the tea. So. Let's go right into it. So the wind makes it a little bit more challenging. And we use five grams for each teapot and then we're gonna fill it with the quantity needed for each teapot. So here I'm using around 200 milliliters. While with this one, I'm using a little bit more. As you might have seen, there's a small net here. So it's a small filter. The tetsubin comes, tetsubin comes without a filter. So we are need or we are in need to use a filter. Therefore, we need to add a little bit more water just to touch the leaves and to brew them in the right way. So from the beginning standpoint already, we see the quantity is quite, quite different between these two teapot types. And here I already prepared two glasses. As you know, Japanese green tea is important that you don't overbrew it. So I prepared already two, that, uh, two glasses there that I get 
all um, the water which is touching the leaves out of um, the teapot and uh, fill it with in the glasses and now we are already there so first one is the Kyusu which one I filled so we see a beautiful green color that's tea leaves and we're gonna use the second one yeah, what a good so now just to make sure to be sure that we don't touch the leaves anymore we put them a little bit higher put the tea the lid aside okay so what we can see already from a first glance is that actually the tea uh, which is coming uh, from the tea which is coming from the kyusu so this one here has much more intensity this one is a little bit lighter so what we can already see is that actually um, is a point which I mentioned already before with the Gyokuro brewing is when you use a smaller amount of um, room to brew uh, your tea to uh, um, actually then using also a smaller amount of water then the concentration versus the from the leaf water ratio kind of gets smaller and this I'm expecting now in terms of taste but let's have a look just when we dive into the taste profile of these two teas what actually the difference is so um, first one here is the Kyusu so the Senkuen tea is not one of my personal favorite teas I must admit but what is nice about the Senkuen uh, Sencha or this Fukamushi Sencha is that it has quite a good amount of a little bit this more vegetal flavor profile. It has a pr quite a strong flavor profile of edamame. Um, it's not very sweet. It doesn't go really in the fruity or maybe even sugary taste profile. And that's actually um, why this tea is not so much my favorite I really like when tea especially when um, the deep steam tea so the Fukamushi style tea when they go a little bit into this fruity um, a little bit more mango pineapple flavor profiles I'm a big fan of that with this one here it quite stops around this more vegetable but very smooth it has a little bit of a cashew nutty flavor profile as well but it doesn't get too sweet but um, a very refreshing tea also at the same time so staying in this more a little bit greener a little bit more fresher taste profile more edamame a little bit this cashewy nearly nutty flavor which you get um, quite an interesting tea and when you don't like it too much when it goes too strong into this umami a little bit sweet savory flavor profile then this tea could be something for you and this I get very much now from the first brewing um, in uh, the Kyusu style brewing now let's go for the where we taste the bigger uh, amount of water where we have the two glasses and here really comes I must say it is for me a disadvantage of the bigger amount or kind of uh, bigger ratio between leaf and water is it's just the beauty of green tea is then the, the more concentrated you brew it the more complex the taste profile becomes so you are really kind of tasting these different notes which I had before it went a little bit from a spinachy fresh cut vegetal flavor to edamame then I got a little bit of this cashew nutty flavor profile so quite interesting in terms of its profile and the development of the taste in my palate um, which just comes out beautifully when you don't use too much water now when I'm going into this um, a little bit more diluted version of my green tea if I may say so the tea just gets flatter so the tea taste doesn't evoke so many differences anymore um, I still get a little bit of this yeah of this edamame there's a little bit of this 
spread this cut grass, a little bit uh, summer grass flavor profile. I get here a little bit more of a hay flavor as well, which I didn't get here so much. Now, here I get much more of this edamame flavor profile. So I can feel that there's kind of a hayish undertone, but I didn't realize it because kind of this smoothness of this edamame, this a little bit freshness, but slight sweetness of the edamame. If you ever had an edamame, if you ever have eaten it, it's a little bit of a mix maybe of maybe spinach and peanuts kind of flavor profile, but not the nutty flavor profile of the peanut but more kind of this little slight sweetness of this of the peanut mixed with uh, the taste profile of fresh spinach so I would say this is more or less how I would describe the edamame flavor profile and um, here I this flavor profile is much weaker and then it leaves a little bit more space for another flavor profile which is a little bit drier it's a little bit yeah, it's much less intense um, and it gives a little bit more space to the hay, but at a much lower level, and there's much less kind of differences. There are no different stages. There's just this small flavor profile. And this, in my opinion, is a little bit unfortunate, especially when you try or when you drink a beautiful green tea, um, which might kind of evolve um, in your palate through different taste stages, especially when you get a little bit acquainted to green tea, when you drink it um, several times a week or maybe even daily, you really start to develop these nuances which are so such a pleasure with green tea. And with the bigger amount of water, you just lose this variety, you lose a little bit this um, kind of uh, broader complex taste profile. So that's why here I get this much less, but I don't want to um, dismiss directly now already the big teapot so let's go to the second brewing here I just dip this back in have here a second and I just brew it very very quick 20 seconds is enough for the second brewing If you paid attention now, I brewed first this one and then this one here, so I should have done it the other way around, but let's get rid of this. And let's try the second brew. So you see the second brew is a little bit stronger, which is nice. So I'm expecting a little bit more of a flavor profile, but still versus the QC teapot, you can see that this one here has just more color. So I expect to have more taste intensity, but let's go. Bigger teapot. There's a little bit of a stringency now mixing in with the tea. So this is often what I um, experience that on the second brewing, there are a little bit, there's a little bit more release of astringent flavor profiles um, uh, with Japanese green tea. Some teas, they really due to the long shading and when they're very sweet, so a little bit more, this more fruity also fukamushi. And uh, so when you have a shaded and fukamushi, so deep steamed, tea you have a little bit more this fruit in this beautiful sweetness with the second brewing there's always a little bit more of astringency coming some tea they cover this very well due to the nice balance of the sweetness and they have quite a strong sweetness so you have not real astringency with this tea here with the second brew you clearly feel a little bit of freshness there's kind of this triggering up or this uh, kind of building up of a little bit more of a stringent flavor profile but it's not very strong so um, it is still very very nice smooth but there's a little bit more freshness with this tea now with the kyusu Still much more intense and I get much more of this kind of nutty flavor profile. So I didn't realize it when I last drank, drank this tea. It's 
it has a beautiful nutty undertone mixed with the beautiful freshness. So I get, still get this edamame, this spinachy flavor profile. There's not a lot of fruit, still not a lot of fruit there. I get a little bit of this edamame flavor profile, but it gets a little bit less dominant in the second brewing. And you have a little bit of an astringency, which is showing up. But all in all, again, this one here um, is definitely the more intense, more complex, for me, more enjoyable taste uh, experience when I'm using just a little bit less water. But I must say the second brewing now with the Tetsubin was much better, but still the flavor profile is weak in comparison to the Kyusu. And that's why for me, it's a, it can be a way to drink. If you're new to tea, maybe you don't realize that much of a difference for you, or maybe it's the best way or a good way for you to start. But if you really want to experience the full flavor profile of uh, the Japanese green tea, I suggest you to really use less amount of water if you have only the big teapot at home and you might have a French press. This is also a very good way to brew tea because it just uses less water and you don't um, squeeze the tea leaves which can render then uh, the tea um, more stringent and this doesn't happen with, uh, with um, the French press. So a French press is also a good way or maybe use a strainer. I personally even like strainer a little bit better than the bigger teapot because also with the strainer you can use a little bit less water and then have just a more intense brewing. Good, so this was this. Thanks a lot for watching and if you ever have a question feel free to ask us, leave a comment or um, send us an email, send us a DM on Instagram, on Facebook a message or also on TikTok you can find us. So thanks a lot for watching, I hope you like this one. See you and bye bye.